Hi, my name is Audrey Swenson, and I am coordinator of the SART Peers Program with the Sexual Assault Victim Advocate Center, or better known to the Fort Collins community, the SAVA Center. SAVA offers a wealth of resources to the Fort Collins community, including a 24-hour confidential bilingual rape crisis hotline, individual and group therapy sessions, individual advocacy, and prevention education for youth ranging in ages from 6 to 18 years old. And they started out with these survivor readings, the same way that we do our presentations. And it's an actual story of someone who went through sexual abuse, read to you by one of your peers. Um, and that just hit me like a sack of bricks, because mm -hmm. it immediately just let me know this is something that's real and affects people. And it's not just kids in the hallway screaming, he raped me. Um, it's, it's something that is affecting people daily and messing up other people's lives. Hello, I am Noelle. What is your name? Hi, uh, my name is John. I am a therapist over at Saba. So my friend John um, is here and he, as you just said, is the therapist at Saba, which what does Saba stand for? So I am with the uh, Sexual Assault and Victims Advocacy Group uh, here in uh, Fort Collins. Um, I provide uh, direct uh, services uh, therapy for primary and secondary survivors of assault and also work with our prevention team um, to run some of our school-based programs. Awesome. John, what would your day-to-day -day life look like working at Samba? So currently we um, we serve, uh, let's see, it, it, it's an interesting question because it, luckily I get to do a lot of different things um, with the agency. Um, primarily I'm working as a therapist. I have a caseload of about 20 clients at the moment. Cool. Um, so I am able to uh, see clients throughout most of the day. Um, so I work, with, um, I work with clients who are anywhere um, from uh, currently, I think I have a client under, I think I have about four minor clients, and then I have clients who are, you know, elderly as well, up into the 80s. Uh, so I see both male and female clients um, of, you know, pretty, pretty varied age ranges right now. Um, I'd say uh, usually I set aside, I'm one of those people who gets more admin done between 7.30 and 8, so I'll get more done then than I will all day. Uh, so I'll typically uh, have a morning of admin, um, and um, starting around 8.30 I'll begin seeing clients, or, or 9, no, no clients until coffee's kicked in. Yes, and then, very um, true. Oh, my, oh, I'm going to get extra credit for you because <laughs> Marie loves coffee. Okay, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, therapy doesn't start till 9. Um, but, you know, typically from 9 to 5, um, I'll see clients. Um, I have... Uh, the way I like to line it out is to have 50-minute uh, sessions. So every hour block, I'll see somebody for 50 minutes, and then I'll have the opportunity to have 10 minutes to uh, get notes done or um, make sure that their ledgers are, are up to date. Um, cool. And the schedule looks good for next week. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Um, and, you know, we I asked John to be interviewed because um, as I will go into or went into already, um, I'm looking at, we're looking at the meso level of therapeutic practice. So, um, on that note, um, I'm wondering like, and, and John got his master's in social work, so he's very familiar with what meso means, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah, it makes sense. Absolutely. Um, so with... Could you talk a little bit about that? Just like, what does meso practice look like for you guys at Saba? Absolutely. Um, so I, I will say that we do a lot less. Um, let me reframe that. Therapy is a very small part of what we do at Saba. Um, so we actually um, we are trying to address the way that uh, violence, uh, sexual sexual violence, can impact our community. And we do that through providing quite a different, uh, quite a lot of different outlets uh, for the community. Um, so we do that by uh, giving talks in the community um, in Lamar, Lamar County and in Weld. 
Um, we operate a 24-7 crisis hotline. Um, we do uh, a lot of pre preventative work. So we have programs for middle schoolers and high schoolers. We have a SART peers program where um, we have an entire team that goes into the schools and you know, promote some healthy relationships um, and, you know, how do I talk to somebody? How do I set a healthy boundary? How do I have a confrontation? How do I uh, support a peer who's gone through an assault? Um, I actually was just down at the Pooter High School and got to do a talk on um, same kids and how mm. do we support um, a peer who's gone through an assault. Wow, that's um, incredible. So, you know, qu quite, a, quite a bit of, you know, education, you know, um, right up front. Yeah. And I saw, now do you guys do, you do group therapy at Saba as well? Absolutely, yeah. What does that look like? So we have, um, we, we have um, a couple different types of groups um, and mainly what we want to be able to cover are two areas. I want to be able to cover my primary survivors, so people who have experienced the assault themselves. Um, I, I'm starting a men's group in January. Mm. Uh, this is a need we identified as... Um, there isn't a single, uh, that I've heard of, a single men's group in town for male survivors of sexual assault. Yeah, wow. And I'd say my caseload right now is pretty 50-50 between female and male at the moment. That is incredibly is, interesting. Which is surprising because yes. it, it's a lot harder for males to report. Yeah, wow. Um, so we, we're, we're, all, we're seeing actually an explosion in how many people we're seeing right now with the Me Too movement and how many people feel empowered to come in and tell their stories. Um, so, How for incredible. instance, this month, last year, we had 54 clients. This this month, this year, we have 154. So, it's, it's, it's a lot of people are feeling more comfortable, feeling like they have permission to speak at the moment. Um, Thank you for saying that. I mean, yeah. wow. That's the goal, is for people to, you know, it's not over yet, obviously, but... Well, see, you know, when one person in a group of people, you know, says something, they, they automatically give everyone else around them in their group, you know, permission to speak. Yeah. Um, so we're seeing a lot of folks, seeing a lot of folks come in. So uh, I'll digress. Um, we, we have support groups for primary survivors, but another way we try to, you know, um, influence, you know, the community is by providing secondary survivor workshops. So this is supporting anybody who has had a friend um, or is a family member or a friend um, of somebody who's gone through uh, sexual violence or even somebody who um, is curious about learning more about how to support a survivor, how to work through sexual uh, violence or trauma in itself. So it's really a trauma 101 course that we put on. 